Okay, carrying three. They love you. You know. This is Princess Leia Organa. You're listening to Planet Leia. Permission is granted to land on Planet Leia. Brought to you by Fanta Tracks. Here is your host, Claire Henry. Well, good evening. It is Sunday, the 22nd of December, and this is a slightly off piste episode of Planet Leia where we are going to talk all things The Rise of Skywalker. We shall be spoiling lots, we shall be discussing plots, we shall be discussing characters. So if you have not seen the film yet, please do not listen because it will get spoiled because we are going to talk about everything that we think is important in this film. So I have with me tonight, or this afternoon, depending on which side of the pond you're on, I've got Johanna. Hello. Who's currently sewing a Christmas skirt. And I have Megan. Hello, everyone. And uh, what time is it for you currently at the minute? It's three in the afternoon. Three in the afternoon for you. 9 p.m. for me. And Johanna? 10 p.m. 10 p.m. So there you yeah. go. So, right, let's get That's started. Much sense that this is also like at least the days are getting longer now. I mean, we don't have much daylight, so soon we will be back to at least six hours with the sun up. Oh, that's bonkers. <laughs> that is just bonkers. Right, well, let's get started. First things first, how many times have you seen it? Two. Two. I've only gone once. Shame. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. Ring the bell. Shame. Okay, so here's the big question. Can you ask how many times have you seen it? Twice. Yeah. Twice, twice. Okay, was it worth the 42-year wait? That's the question. For somebody... No, that's, that's a heavy question, Claire. Yes. Well, I know. I mean, we have to start off at the start, don't we? I'm going to start off and I'm going to say I was quite happy with the ending of Return of the Jedi. Things were unanswered for me. Things were still unanswered for me in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. And they were on the main answered for me in The Rise of Skywalker, I'm going to say. So was it worth the 42 year wait? Yes, because it added a little bit more on for me. That's a strange if, it, one. if you're putting it way, if it was worth a 42 year wait, no, I don't think. To me, the ending for the Skywalker saga will be Return of the Jedi. This is like an extra add-on because I felt that nah, it's too little that mashes up with the prequels and the original trilogy. So I don't really see this as a good ending to the whole Skywalker saga. So I will keep it as. The ending was when Anakin brought balance to the Force by killing Palpatine. That will be my ending for the Skywalker saga. These films are something else. So I'm going to go straight in there and say, so his granddaughter killing him, is that yeah. not balance to the Force and that's actually what you meant? No, because the balance of the Force, well, then that means that Anakin didn't kill Palpatine at Return of the Jedi. Also, this was the Skywalker saga, and even if Rey took the name Skywalker in the end, she's not a Skywalker. So, for me, the Skywalker saga will be the saga about Anakin Skywalker. Mm, Interesting. Megan, go for it. So many great points. Like, I've been in a little bit of a struggle since I've seen the movie. Um, I really... I really enjoyed the movie. I can't say that I didn't enjoy it because I really had fun. I really, like, the whole time I was on the edge of my seat and there's so many things that that I was, you know, shocked and surprised and happy about. And then, you know, when I thought about when we talk about the Skywalkers, kind of like Johanna said, it's not really a conclusion to their story because we feel like it already happened in a way. Um, I... I feel like maybe Ray brings upon a 
somehow more pop. I had this thought as as I was thinking about the rise of Skywalker. The Skywalkers find peace only in death, which is sort of really sad mm. because they're all dead at this point. Um, but then Ray decides to take the mantle of the Skywalker um, legacy upon her. So, I mean, it's it. Yes, it was worth the 42 year wait. Do I think it really tied up the Skywalker saga in a satisfying way? Not necessarily, but I really enjoyed the movie. And so I'm I'm satisfied. Yeah, I, I, I would say I, I'm probably more with you, Megan, on, on that sense. I, I can say what for me had been, it would have been a fitting end to the Skywalker saga if we had had more Skywalkers involved in the end, meaning that if we had seen like Anakin coming back, mm-hmm. not doing anything physical, but Anakin's force ghost had totally changed the dynamics of the ending between Rey and Palpatine. If it had been there, not just like one of the many voices that you hear from uh, the old Jedi Masters, that would have changed it as well. And then in the end, why wasn't Ben a force ghost? Oh, no, that was something I was thinking about. I mean, mm-hmm. just those little small things, that had been, like, a very fitting, just seeing in the end scene, if she had seen Anakin and Ben as well as Force Ghost, then we, we would have gotten, like, yeah, goodbye to Skywalker family, now something new is happening. Yeah. Hello, I'm Warwick Davis, and you're listening to Fanfa Tracks. Do you think, and this is something I was thinking about, do you think the film really merited... Could it have been split into two and things like Mm -hmm. that possibly been added? Do you know what I mean? It was very, it was crammed. Yeah. I I, I think probably why you're feeling the way you're feeling, Megan, is exactly the way I felt after I saw it the first time. I couldn't keep up with it. I physically, mentally, visually couldn't keep up with it the first time. I know that's because you're sitting watching a Star Wars movie for the first time anyway, Mm -hmm. so you're completely full of anxiety because you just want to know what happens. Yeah. Which I think is... And then with it to be so fast-paced, so quickly, I I just... I couldn't keep up with it. And it was just like, okay, so here we have Ben or Kylo Ren at that point finding this pyramid, going to here, going to there, doing this, doing that. Cut. Here's Ray, floating rocks, doing this, doing that, doing that. Cut. Then Poe and Finn off on their adventure. Cut. And it just was like chop, 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 chop. And it was so fast that I just thought, oh, I'm sure there are extra bits to this that could be added in and then warrant, like they did with The Lord of the Rings, Mm -hmm. a two-piece movie to end the trilogy mm, possibly well for me it wasn't like i said those two things the forest goes could have been in the s- scenes as they were you wouldn't have to have added extra scenes mm. for that so i'm not sure that it would have helped and i will say like my feeling for the whole film is that it's like a string of very good in- or in some cases really great scenes it's just like the overall story arc that we're supposed to now finish up everything finish up the trilogy that one is lacking, but you hardly notice because there are so many great scenes that keep coming and they keep oh, coming. Oh, abs- mm-hmm. I mean, I was, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, that's, I suppose that's the thing is, is there is nothing better than watching a Star Wars film for the first time. No. You're, you're right there. Yep. You're exactly right. You're full of anxiety. You're wanting to know which bit. And because it was so fast paced, I don't, well, I saw it at midnight having been awake for nearly 24 hours anyway. And it was just like, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the film. It was a Star Wars movie that felt like a Star Wars movie. You know. Oh, absolutely. Oh, definitely. So go on then, girls. Favourite scene out of the whole film? Okay, well, there was one thing that made me shout in the whole, yes, everybody that was sitting around me heard me. And that was Wedge... And Pill is coming in in his cameo. That's like, yes! <laughs> okay, yes, I'm an excellent So cameo. come on, explain to everybody why this brought deep joy to your heart. Because it's Wedge and Pill is the best pilot in the galaxy. And he was, and I, and I, he's one of those that really has been missing. 
And also, since you know that, I mean, Dennis Lawson, the actor, isn't really one of the... He's not one of those who goes around a lot to convention. He's not really... And he has a bit avoided a bit of the Star Wars thing to finally have him back. It was like, yes! And I mean, I've loved the... The X-Wing series, the X-Wing books, everything with X-Wings, basically. So it was like, yes, he's back. But were you disappointed that he was in the Millennium Falcon or were you, or, or would you have rather have seen him on an X-Wing? Of course, he would, or rather, I would, at best, he would have piloted a Falcon. Yeah. That one, because he is a better pilot than Lando, so. Yeah. But he was there, that was the important thing. He's gotten old as well. Maybe not as good as flying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, Megan. I know you've only seen it once. So that's a hard one because you're probably in the flashback throwbacks of, oh my God, yes. what have I actually just watched? Yeah. And the reason I haven't, I didn't go see it again right away was because there was so much that happened that I'm like, you know, do I wait till it comes out on Blu-ray and pause and rewind and you know, go forward. I, I don't, I don't know. I probably will end up seeing it after Christmas again in the theater. Um, but though, I guess the ones, I don't know that I have a favorite scene yet, but the one, a couple scenes that really stood out to me were, was the first fight with um, Ray and Kylo when he's on the planet Kajimi and she's up in his like uh, boudoir. bedroom, his boudoir. <laughs> And that was like the coolest thing because they're not in the same place yet. They're fighting like, and I, people, you know, we saw that in the trailer, but we didn't know that was happening. And I thought that was a really interesting um, sort of misdirection there from the trailer. Yes. And you, and you did see that to a point, didn't we? That was alluded to in The Last Jedi, wasn't it? This sort of oh, right. transfer yeah. of them being together and a bond and, yeah. and and but then the whole uh like development of that into the fact that then the physicality of them yeah. being together yeah. although not together was i thought that was very clever i i thought that yeah. was excellent yeah that was a really a big standout moment for me um and the other standout moment which is very heart wrenching was when chewbacca found out that leia yeah. had passed yeah and I feel like that moment of all the sad moments in Star Wars, that was the most visceral for me. I mean, Jonas physically just performed that like it was so heart wrenching. Like I couldn't stop crying. It was <laughs> such a beautiful, that, that, that is moment. A, that is a wonderful moment, and it felt like. The way that they a bit lingered on that scene, even if it, if it was right. very short, were like, yes, this is our chance to like showing the collective Star Wars fandom mourning Carrie and Princess Leia. It was like, yeah, he gave voice to everything about Leia and Carrie in that scene. It, it was a great scene. As I said, there are so many great scenes in this film. There are. The, yeah, and, and I think that's probably why it's, it will end up being one of the best of the Star Wars movies, you know, as it as it progresses on. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. For me, I still, I'm going to be honest, I haven't actually yet processed the Carrie Fisher scenes. Mm -hmm. I don't think I I'm actually, I don't think I'm actually quite ready to do that yet. I, I think they were really well done. I think the most heart-wrenching for me, actually, uh, the Chewbacca one was, was, was up there. But actually, Billy Lord having to act and her mum being in that scene. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm not sure I could have done that. And that was at the right. that was at the start when she oh she, she was just saying something to her, you know, like I can't remember exactly what it was. But I just thought, oh, my goodness, she's giving this line. She's delivering this line, knowing that her mum is going to be in that line. And I just thought, well, that's really brave on her part. Yeah. And I thought, well, that was nice that they got a scene together at, yeah. in the final movie. It, it, not together, but together, if that makes sense. So I think Absolutely. for me, that was probably, wasn't my favourite, but it was certainly one of the most emotional ones for me in that sense. I agree. I, and did you see there was a moment where 
um, Billy's character had her arm around. Yes. Yes. Leia, like guiding her. Yes. And it was just such a fleeting moment, but I was like, I started crying then because I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm Anthony Daniels and you are listening to Fanfa Tracks. Well done. I think what I need to do is probably, I'll go and say it, I'm definitely going to go and say it again. I'm going to say it multiple times again before it comes off the screen. But I think I'm going to go on my own and I'll have nobody there beside me or whatever because I was trying, Sophie was beside me in one and then I was with a group of fellas for the, for when I went to say it at midnight. So I was, I'm not going to be a blubbering wreck in front of them. But <laughs> Um, I'll go and sit again and I'll try and process all those scenes. I thought it was very yeah. well done. I thought her character arc with what they had was good. Mm -hmm. I think that the scenes that they had was good. I'm wondering the Jedi training bit between Luke and Leia. That looked to me like a scene from Battlefront. Like, oh. I mean, that was a much younger Leia. That must have been something else. Than yeah, I think that was footage taken from one of the video games. It looked like it to me. I've not, mm. I've not played the games, but I've watched people playing the games. So mm -hmm. that to me looked very much like that one. Uh, mm, my favorite. My favorite other thing. Uh, overall, I must say, I was really worried about what we were going to do with Leia's arc in this film. And I would say it was okay. It was as good. I was impressed that it was as good as it was. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, you have this feeling that it should have been so much more. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, right. Yeah. They yeah. did a great job with the material that they had. Uh, yes. And, and to be able to thread her into that was yeah. was was brilliant you know the fact that that they could do it that way and they kept her in I, I, well and i was worried that she would really have just been in the very beginning and then yeah. that was it yeah so i was pleasantly surprised that the, she was in a significant portion yes and, and and actually the thread of it all the way through until ben died yeah. And her body didn't didn't disappear mm. until Ben disappeared. So, yeah. And I yes, thought, well, right. she was just making sure he went to the light yeah. as, and then she could go. That was something, you know. Which is why you should have been a force ghost at the end. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Agreed. Agreed with that one. I and and I wonder I don't know why they didn't do it. Because actually, like, you, after you, all this talk about him yeah. and Ray the, being this dyad, being such strong, connected, why isn't he a force ghost? Yeah. Why can't, that, yeah. So interestingly, there's the scene that I just thought was unnecessary or yeah. part of the scene that was unnecessary was Ben and Ray kissing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That wasn't necessary to me. That was not necessary. That was the Disney princess kiss and they'll all live happily ever after. And then he dies. They had done this massive struggle all the way through it, through the light, through the dark, everything. They get to that bit and then they kiss. And I'm just like going, no, that, that actually didn't, in my opinion, that didn't need to happen. I know that uh, there are lots of people are very happy that it happened. Mm -hmm. That was actually, when I saw that scene, it was like, oh, this is going to be so many Raylo fans going crazy about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. It was my first thought, and like, okay, Raylo won, but then he died. Well, yes. So I, I was almost laughing at that scene just because I was thinking about all the Raylo fans. Well, as soon as they kissed, as soon as they kissed, I actually tutted and out loud, and I went, and this was in the first showing of it I tutted and I went that didn't need to happen this random stranger beside me looked at me and he went okay thanks for that <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, I did feel that that was fan service yes that was an obvious yes. I mean there was lots of fan service through it lots of fan service through it but for me uh, that was the one that was the most unnecessary of them all. If they kissed, then they just should have carried on living. Princess Leia could have disappeared and gone to the light, and then you wouldn't have had to have had the Force Ghost because then they would have carried on to mm -hmm. 
to do it that I, way. Yeah. I actually, after I had thought about it a little while, I really don't like that Ben died. Not because of but it would have been so interesting to see how would he handle a character that go, has been dark, goes to the light, mm-hmm. but doesn't die. I mean, there have been so mm. many discussions over the years about what would have happened if Vader survived Endor. I mean, it would have been so interesting to see them handle. Yeah, you've been a mass murderer. You have done all this dreadful thing. Should we trust you just because you're a light side now? I would have loved to see them handle that. And I was really thinking, like, yes, now we're going to see how do you handle these very complicated issues. And then if I like, now it's easier to have him dead. I think it would have been an interesting take on it. Which brings me to my next point. Did you see that Finn is a force sensitive? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's. I wish they would have played it up more as like a long, longer arc in the trilogy. Yes. Agreed. Do you think, because Kathleen Kennedy said last week, was it? Or was it at the premiere? This is the end of the Skywalker saga as we know it, but we will continue to see Skywalkers in other ways. So, I- Well, I felt like they left it open at the end. Yes, I agree. For more stories, whether or not they, you know, they happen next year or in 10 years. You know, I think they, they absolutely left it open with Ray taking on the mantle of Skywalker. Um, so must mean it, you know, meaning Anakin, Luke, um, yeah. Leia and Ben. I mean, I guess Ben, Leia was never, I guess, named Skywalker. So it was, you know, I don't know in their minds, you know, are they considering just those four characters are over and everyone else, you know, it is is continuing Move on. on. I mean, the other the other thing that that they said is is isn't it? Well, I've heard sort of muted is that Skywalker now means Jedi. I I heard that as sort of a theory leading up to the movie. Yeah. I had also heard that that Ray she wouldn't be she would be like the first of the Skywalkers because she would change the name of a poor sensitive. That's something I had heard as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, your least disappointing, or you the, the scene that disappointed you the most? Or the uh, part of the story that disappointed you the most? It's still what I said in the start. Anakin's Force Ghost should have been there defeating yeah. Palpatine. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like, yes, they're building up, they're building up. No. 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 I 100% agree with Johanna, because I, t- when Ray was fighting Palpatine and Palpatine, like, you know, tossed Kylo Ben, you know, off into the pit. And I, like, literally was chanting, Force Ghost Anakin, Force Ghost (laughs) Anakin, he's going to show up. And he did it! We heard his voice. But, like, I thought, like, oh, that would have been this cool moment. Like, he's truly bringing balance to the Force now. You know? So I completely, 100% agree with you, Johanna. Like, that was definitely disappointing. And the fact that they had him having a line, I mean, you have thought about this. Why well, exactly. don't go the circle and bring in the ghost? Right. So that that was a missed a, a missed opportunity. I think so. I think so. Um, uh, and to be honest, I'm thinking about, I mean, in the sequel trilogy, they have really tried to have as little prequel stuff as possible. Yes, mm-hmm. they brought up Palpatine, but it's Palpatine more because he's the emperor from the original trilogy. So I felt right. like, oh, they don't dare bring him back Hayden Christensen because, oh, everyone will hate that Anakin. I'm pretty sure that they had those thoughts, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I know that there are a lot of us who would have just loved to see Hayden showing up and like, yes, absolutely. I'm surprised he didn't because he is so much in, you know, he's at Celebration. He was at the mm-hmm. premiere. Mm-hmm. So do we think then that that's because actually he's going to be in the Obi-Wan series then? Do we think that? Uh, I mean, no. why, mm. why wheel him out for all this? And then he's not actually in anything except one little tiny two second voice clip. I, I actually think it's fan demand, really. I mean, they noticed just what a great reception he got at, at the first celebration, mm-hmm. where it was that the fans really like him. So I think they realize he is 
big thing among a lot of fans. So, but they didn't. I don't think they dared bring him into the films because then you will have oh we don't. I think they were t- thinking too much about oh all the people hated the prequels. Everyone hated Hayden Christensen. We can't have him in the sequels. And yeah. that's how it feels for me. Hmm. So Harrison Ford turning up. Oh, I was so happy. I was unspoiled about that. I was I, very surprised. I was unspoiled as well. I have to say, I walked into that... Well, as Johanna and I talked about in the last episode, I knew nothing. No. Nothing. Everything that we talked about was just mm. us guessing it. I walked in and I didn't know that... Mm. I knew nothing at all. And that... when. He turned round and then they mirrored the same conversation yeah. again as they had in The Force Awakens, mm-hmm. but this time it was his redemption. That, to me, was a fitting... There was no other way Ben could become good or part of the light side without the redemption, even it being a memory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I guess that's probably... Except for them wedge the little came, came out, that's probably my favorite scene of the whole film. It was just yeah. so beautiful. The whole it was and very so beautiful. The, yes. Yeah. It, it did look like he just walked out of a hairdresser's, mind you. That's the yeah. only thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. A little just, bit. Yeah, a little bit of a bouffant hair. A little and, bit. And Mark Hamill looked like he'd actually just stuck his head in a oily fat. Yeah, it was quite, quite amusing. Just these are little things I noticed on the second show, show yeah. you know. It was lovely to see him in it. Yeah. And so surprised to get Harrison Ford to do it because you really I really thought I mean The Force Awakens, it was so obvious he wanted to say, Yeah, now I'm done with this character, do this film and never more and then right. he showed up. I oh yeah, I was so happy with it. Do any of you watch Killing Eve? Have you no. seen no. Right. So Ray's mother is. Oh, I read that. Is yeah. an, is an, a, a really popular actress over here. And that also was another one that I walked into that was unspoiled. When she came up on the screen, mm-hmm. the whole cinema all went <gasps> like this. And then, Killing Eve, Killing Eve, because she plays this absolute monster in Killing Eve. Like, it's brilliant. She plays a character called Villanelle, who is a Russian assassin. And then to see her uh, hugging a child and being all caring and kind, w- that was a great choice of actress for that one. Did you spot John Williams? Yes. I did. Well, it was like one of those moments where I'm like, I know that guy. Yes. But I, could, like, I couldn't place it right away. And then I read after the fact that it was John Williams. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I yep. had the people that I was, when I saw it the first time, I was like, was that John Williams? Right. Yes, it was John Williams. Yes. So. yes, that was. And then Kevin Smith is in that scene just after, I think it's just either oh. before or after. And I thought that was that was quite nice. I'll have to, I didn't really spot it, so I'll have to go back and spot that one again. I've seen some that he said helmeted characters, so maybe you don't even see his no, face. No, yeah, I don't think you see mm-hmm. his face. Hello, Bantha Trex, Bantha Trex. I swear you do Hi, Bantha Trex. So, new characters added Zori Bliss, Babu Freak. Uh, Babu Freak, he was so oh, I like Babu Freak. Cute. <laughs> Now, that was played by Moaning Myrtle from the yes. Harry Potter. Yes. So she did she, such a good job with his, with his little voice. So, so, she was at the, so she was at the premiere at the carpet and she was doing signatures for everybody. And I had no, because I'd gone into this, still had gone into it, had seen it, spoiler free, I hadn't a clue why she was there. And I felt a bit, I feel a bit. I don't know that they announced. Did they announce that? I don't remember that. Well, I do. I read that after the fact. Yeah, she was brilliant. Whatever, she, however, she manipulated her voice for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was great. That was pure fun. Yes, total fun. And I thought suited the, you know, suited the film, suited the humor of it, mm-hmm. suited the base yeah. of it. Jana is or Jana, however mm-hmm. anybody wants to pronounce it. Again, I thought she was good. I really like yeah. Naomi Aki. I think she's a great she did actress. A wonderful job. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just felt like 
it was a bit unnecessary. I, I like her character, and all, but it was like, why do you introduce yet another character? And she was so similar to Rose in The Last Jedi as well. Yes. Like, Somebody else said that. Somebody, Somebody else right. said that that whole part potentially could have been Rose, except for the fact that she was another a trooper that's trooper, defected. Yeah. So do you think there there's the spin off there? Well, she's off on an adventure with Lando, so probably yeah. we will probably see those adventures, yes. There'll either be a backstory yeah. of how that troop of troopers defected or why they defected and then you'll get maybe the Lando off she goes in her merry mm -hmm. travels again so you know again it's another I think what they've done is opened up you know lots of different avenues Poe being a spice runner yeah I want so many stories about Poe now <laughs> that's what I was like. yes give me all his backstory yeah yeah I thought that was good and who was who else was new? Gina Babu Free. Um, Dominic Monaghan played that resistance. Yeah. Yes. Guy. No, he didn't have as big a role as I thought he was going to have. Well, and I I I read also some complaints about that because they thought, well, why was he there? That could have been like more of what Rose did. Yeah, but you know, he's a friend of J.J. Abrams, but, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, I why not? So. Well, right. But, if we go back to why I think the film has several problems, if you if you compare now Rise of Skywalker with, with Return of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi, you didn't, you all you had Jabba, but otherwise you didn't introduce any new characters. Instead, you get like now we're gonna finish this very tight story about this few characters, and you really get like it matters so much for these few persons. Now it was like there are so many characters, let's introduce some more. Yeah, it felt like. It right. felt rushed, and you didn't really have ta have time to really get into why should we care about these people. So, do, uh, but do you think that was because it was disjointed from the start? Yes, they should have had a plan. I mean, yes. here is the teacher. I agree. Here is yeah. the teacher in me. A start, yeah. middle, and end planned yeah. out, and then worked out. Yes, follow right. that plan as much as you can. But then that's where it became disjointed. And then could you have imagined if Colin Trevorrow, I can't say his name, he did get writing mm -hmm. credits for it, but where was his story going to go? You know. Right. So perhaps, Johanna, that's that's maybe in, in, in essence why, you know, there were lots of new characters added that didn't maybe necessarily need to be. And that's also been, I've had a quite, I had a bit of a problem connecting why do Poe, Finn and Ray care about each other? We have the story, we have seen so much about Poe and Finn, but we haven't really seen Ray connecting with them. And now we were supposed to, okay, they're having fun, but I never really got the feeling that you have in Empire that Luke is off to save his friend. He's leaving Yoda because he really needs to save his friend. With Ray, I didn't have that feeling that, she really cares about this because we haven't gotten that backstory in the films. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be happy about it just because it is so fast-paced and there are so many good scenes. I mean, mm -hmm. we are the ones who are thinking about the biggest story arc. How does it connect? What do yeah. we feel? So, in a way, I mean, we are a lot more critical. Yeah, oh, than, well, J.J. Uh, Abrams did a Q&A, yeah. didn't he? Uh, yesterday, I think it was. And, and he made that joke. He said, you know, how do you, how, somebody asked me, how do I, how did I manage to please mm -hmm. all the people? I, you, you can't. And everybody is right on, on the main. It was a fantastic film. It was brilliant to go and see a Star Wars film again. And, and for me, that was, that was the best bit about it. So the old legacy characters then, Lando Calrissian, Lovely to see him back on. And and also, he had... I was a bit afraid that he was going to get an even bigger role just because, like, okay, we have killed off Luke, we have killed off Han, or Leia instead. We need to have an old legacy character in it. So I thought they were going to make, basically make him the new general. But 
Mm. But it was like, it was plausible what he did. Hi, this is Gareth Edwards, director of the best standalone Star Wars film since Caravan of Courage called Rogue One. You're listening to Panther Tracks. Enjoy. And again, there's another backstory that will be a book or be something or do something. C-3PO had the best lines in the film. Hilarious. And nice to see that he had the lines that he did. I thought it was, Mm -hmm. I, I thought... Anthony Daniels did very well with it, considering that he's put the suit on again, mm-hmm. you know, and all the rest of it. I thought, and his lines were just hilarious. I mean, he. This was the three pills film. I mean, out of all the nine films, this is where he's at its best. Yeah. Oh, very much so. Uh, when his mind was wiped. Yeah. <laughs> and he turned around to Babu Freak and he went, mm-hmm. "You are my best friend." <laughs> <laughs> I just made me laugh. I just made. Or uh, what was the one you didn't call my name, but I'm okay. You yeah. know, uh, they're just just really yeah. really funny things like that. Nice to see Wicket at the end. Yeah, but it also why? Uh, well, yeah, exact fan it's, service. There goes yeah. back to the Raylo. Uh, yes. There's the fan service bit. You know, as a which I can't really complain about other fan services. Yeah, well, no, 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 none of us can in that bit. What about Hux? That oh, oh. I, actually, here's one of my favorite lines when he said, like, no, I don't care who wins as long as Kylo Ren loses. We're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. Like, don't talk too much about dark, light, good, evil, like, right. as long as he loses. Yeah, I. What did you think, Megan? I was like, "Oh, hey, it's Hux. Oh, bye." <laughs> like, it was so fleeting, you know. And I, I'm very apathetic about that character. Like, I don't love him. I don't hate him. You know, I, I was like, but I felt kind of bad. Yeah, I that... think that Richard E. Grant, new character, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think. He had a bit of the Grand Morph Tarkin about him. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, he hammed that up to that point. You could t- you could tell from all his interviews, you know, when he was talking about being in the Star Wars, he was clearly a fan. He knew his stuff and he was clearly a fan. And I would say, you know, if anybody asked him, who did he model himself on? I'm going to say he probably modeled himself on Grand Morph Tarkin. And he was evil. Yes, he did a great job. He did a great job. But mm-hmm. as uh, uh, as my dad and I were watching it, my dad leant over to me and he says, he's really evil. He's not going to make it to the end of the movie, is he? <laughs> well, I think you're probably and, right and there, Dad. He must have an interesting backstory since it's talking that he has served Palpatine since the last war. I mean, you have a lot of story to go through there. Right. And But I feel like he was... Once again, the fact that they were a bit lacking in a plan, I have a feeling they had to bring in this character because they had made Hugs too much as a comic relief. Yeah. 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 And they needed some some imperial commander that they you didn't laugh at because in the end you felt like you were laughing every time you saw Hux. Yeah. Yeah. I did like the fact that he became the spy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the fact that, as you said, it wasn't because he was turning good. It, it was absolutely for his own gain. Yeah. It wasn't for anything other than kill Kylo Ren and get him out of get get him out of my sight. Let me take him on. So, right, these ships, this flotilla mm-hmm. of ships, with the new Death Star cannon yeah. on it. There always has to be a planet killer. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. and then, I can't help but every time they bring in I felt it's already in Starkiller base I mean is it in the New Jedi Order it's in the old legends where Han has this long monologue about how the Empire always keep coming up with a new super weapon and then we defeat them and it's like I think it's calling my then yeah what's the next thing you're going to do nostril of Palpatine and I feel like every time I see a new super weapon oh that's the nostril of Palpatine yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it 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 but yeah, it's like already legends were on to like you can't come up with new super weapons all the time. But I haven't read the 
is it the rise what's the road to resistance there's yeah there's a rise of the resistance that's it i was i was going to read it beforehand and then i thought no i want to go in with nothing yeah and then it was a really good book I have think you, you read will it? Enjoy it. What, I does have. it add? Does it add anything? Not on hindsight. It's, it's it's closer to the Last Jedi than it is oh, okay. to the Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Um, but it sort of explains wedges part oh. in things. Johanna and... goes out oh, like yes, she's lifting yes, up their phone, I, I, going to Amazon quickly. Like, so you need to read it. <laughs> If you want more wedge in your life, I always want more wedge, in, and it's on my reading list. Good yeah, wedge is on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I I really liked it. There's less Ray. It's you know really, it's a lot of Poe and Finn and and some of Leia and Wedge and Snap. So I mean it's it's yeah. it's really interesting read, and I read it in a weekend, and I haven't read a book that fast in a long time. Wow. Okay. So, I would recommend it. Hi, Paul Blake here, Greedo from Star Wars A New Hope, and you're listening to Fanfare Tracks. Speaking of Snap... Yeah, I was... I got a bit sad when he died. Yeah. yeah. I was so sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pret- have you all read the Aftermath trilogies then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. started reading it, but it was one of the trilogies that... I read the first book. I've had a really big problem with the new books, and it's because... I have a hard time like readjusting myself to I'm still the Legends fan, so Yeah. I started reading Aftermath and I just didn't feel like ah uh, maybe I it's should. It's a difficult continue, but book to read to. anyway. It's a difficult book to read because yeah. of the style that it's written in. But once you get into it, then the second and the third are actually easier to read. You see, I didn't read any expanded universe. Splinter of the Mind's Eye was the only thing mm-hmm. I ever read. <laughs> and, and and then I just thought, no, I need to stop now because I'm not I'm not going down this path. I'm going to just that's it, finished, job done. But the the aftermath trilogy is really good because it gives this backstory to Snap. And and what's mm-hmm. the name? The the Imperial Admiral in Aftermath. Oh. Ray Sloan. Ray Sloan. <laughs> Was she one of the... She was in the background, wasn't she? Oh! Of... Uh-oh. What? What? I definitely... Because from what I remember, what she looks like, and you had a female admiral in one of the scenes in the back. Right. Oh, my have... gosh. Well, I'm go- guess I'm going right? to have to go to the... I, <laughs> You're going to have tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I haven't read the books that much, but from what I remember from her description, like... Isn't that Sloan? It was definitely what I thought when I saw the female officer in the background. Oh, my God. It's been, she's been mentioned in a lot of the books past Aftermath, but there has never been... There has never been any book that said this is what has happened to her. Oh. So right, okay. I, so I'll have to go and have a look. Right. In my mind, at least, hmm. it was her. Okay. Well, that's fine. We'll we'll go with that, and we will look out for it, and then in the next episode, we'll have a chat about that one. Let's tie it all up, and final thoughts while we process it all again. I really loved it i do i do really think i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed the whole pace of it i think it's probably left wanting for different bits and pieces from different angles for me i can see that if they're going to go down the disney plus route and the series like the mandalorian the cassian andor that sort of stuff they have opened themselves out for that Mm -hmm. for sure there's definitely going to be lots of mini series spin-offs from that film i just really enjoyed it i just it it's a grower i walked out of it mm-hmm. like you feeling now megan you do need to see it again just I will. just simply just to catch up on it i think yeah i agree i think like there's so much that i miss and i'm a music person and i don't even remember like I can't remember the new theme, so I even need to go back so I can listen to the the score even better. Um, because this... like there's so much going on, it was like like I couldn't distinguish you know things necessarily because then I'd get distracted by something else. 
the score very much we didn't really tap on that at all did we but the score is basically all the themes interwoven mm -hmm. into one which is really clever like at one point before i'm sure it was before we found out that ray was a palpatine or maybe it was just quickly after the emperor's theme mm, i do remember that came yeah. through with ray but what was it that David Collins said about? Was it the end of the Phantom Menace? Yeah, then the oh, Menace is mm his. -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That yes. those beats came through it. So I'm wondering, yeah. did those beats, you know, if we were to go back and listen to the other scores in the other films, are, are those beats there? The fact that they were using Imperial March again, that built up my hope that we were going to see Anakin in mm -hmm. some form. Yeah. It's his mm -hmm. theme, but then they didn't. Yeah. So yeah, you do need to go back just to listen to the movie. This is Steve Bloom, voice of Zebralios, and you're listening to Fanta Tracks Caravast. <laughs> May the force be with you. So uh, your final thoughts then, Johanna? A lot of great scenes, a lot of things to discuss. For me, it's more like this is an expanded universe story. Mm -hmm. It's not a part of the Skywalker saga for me. Megan? Like I said earlier, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I loved all the twists and turns. There were a couple moments le that left my, you know, left me scratching my head thinking, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> Some things maybe I, I think could have been done differently. Um, but overall, it was a really enjoyable film. And I have to say, Ian McDiarmid was brilliant. Yes. As Palpatine. Like, he did a phenomenal job. And... I mean, if anything, just to have him back in, you know, a larger capacity just was, I, I, I really enjoyed that. And the fact that it was kept quiet. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he came on in right. celebration with the voice over. But the fact that even then, I mean, maybe it's because I just didn't see it on the internet or Twitter or whatever. But I did not see that big a role happening as what it did. And yeah, it was lovely to see him. And he recreated it so well, considering. Mm -hmm. A bit like Anthony Daniels, you know, mm -hmm. 30 years down the line. You know, he, he did brilliantly. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's just lovely to have that feeling of watching a Star Wars movie again for that first that first bit sitting down up comes the crawl and the dead speak brilliant yeah yeah so uh there you go everybody there are our uh how can we put it opinions thoughts we haven't answered it have we we've just sort of blurred at each other to try and get it all to try and make some sort of sense i don't think it's going to make sense for a long time no. I think several showings, several viewings, we'll definitely be picking out more bits and pieces as people get to see it and watch it. But I would say our recommendation, girls, is go and watch it and go and watch Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Don't, don't be, if you didn't like The Force Awakens or you didn't like The Last Jedi, you do need to go and see it. It feels like a Star Wars movie and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and enjoy the ride of it, really, because it's it's mind-blowing in too many parts. It's a wild ride. Yeah, it is a wild it ride. Is. It is. Well, listen, thank you very much for listening and uh, we will be back again, hopefully, uh, end, of Feb end of January, beginning of February, with another episode. We'll have had a few more viewings under our belt. So, from now, it's Bye from me. Bye uh, from me. Bye from me. We love you. You know. You know. You know. <laughs>